Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 26 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled Recovery. The hall went deathly silent as the two continued to square up, but Darby knew that he had your dad by the balls, so stood his ground. Finally, your dad released a loud exhale and let his fists relax, stepping back before turning and storming back to where your mum was waiting, and Darby continued down the hall and waited outside your room, wanting to give you, you and your parents some time together before he went in. Hi, you said with soft apprehension as your parents entered. How are you feeling? Your mum asked with a gentle, concerned smile. I'm okay, you replied quietly. I am, um, I think everything's going like it's supposed to, you added sheepishly, glancing at your dad who hadn't spoken to you yet. He nodded stiffly and looked down. Yun, he said in a deep voice, making you tense at his tone. Use your brain next time. You fought the urge to scowl and just hummed instead. How insensitive can he be? You thought with annoyance. Darby's here, he added, and you flinched as he turned towards the door. Darby, he called sharply. Come in. Your eyes fell to the doorway and your man appeared, his brilliant turquoise eyes falling softly on you as he entered. Got the whole crew here. He commented dryly with a half smirk as he shoved his hands in his pocket and walked over to the bedside. You let out a sigh of relief as he stopped by your head and you reached out to hold his hand, desperately wanting to give him a kiss but refraining because your parents were there. I got into Kapuru, Darby suddenly said, looking from you to your dad and you gasped with excitement. You did? You screeched. Oh my god! We're getting a place together when Yin gets accepted too, Darby added, giving zero hex about appropriation of timing with comments. Jeez, Darby, you snapped. Did you have to say that now? No time like the present, he replied calmly. Best fight the bull when it's fresh, he added, looking at your dad. You hesitated a glance at your father, who looked thoroughly pissed all over again. Aren't you supposed to wait till the bull is nearly dead before taking it on? Your dad panned at Darby. Only pussies do that, he replied lowly, as he stared your dad down. Uh, Mum, could you please prepare for my funeral, you said in a dead tone at her. For personal reasons, I'll be now passing away. Your mum sighed heavily. Listen, she said, grabbing your dad's arm. You, she punctuated, commanding his attention. Go outside. But I didn't do any... Go outside, she said in the sternest voice you'd ever heard her use. Then she turned to Darby. And you too, she snapped. Get outside. Darby smirked and glanced at you from the corner of his eye. Mum's spoken, he commented to you before pushing off your bed rails. I'll be back. Meanwhile, your father was acting like a spoilt five-year-old and was trying to argue with her. It's him, he pouted, pointing at Darby. He's the one who's ruining this family. No, you are ruining this family, she snapped. Now get outside and sort yourselves out, she said, pointing to Darby again, who had casually strolled to the door and was waiting for your dad. Your father huffed loudly and stormed up behind Darby, clearly upset at how your mum had handled him. Fudge, ice cream's nice, isn't it? I wish they had some here, you blabbed, covering for your swearing as best you could. He's a child, your mum grunted angrily. Now, let's talk. Oh no, you whispered. You're not going to give me the talk, are you? No, but I'm going to make you promise me some things, your mum said sternly. What? you asked dubiously. Promise me you won't get pregnant until you graduate college, your mum said, staring you in the eye. Um, okay, he replied. No, Yin, you must promise me, she said sternly. Okay, promise, you confirmed. Promise me that you'll visit on weekends, she said. Wait, you gasped, your eyes widening. Are you letting me move in with Darby? Promise me, she warned softly with a tear-filled smile. Oh my God, you squealed, tears filling your own eyes. Yes, yes, I promise, you bubbled as you leaned over the bed rails to hug her. And promise me that you'll tell your father that you love him, your mum added. Promise, you said with another smile as a tear slipped down your cheek. Last promise, she said as she pulled back. Promise me you'll get better. That's a guarantee, you said with a grin. I'll be out of here in no time. Two days later, you were discharged from the hospital with the all clear. Everything had gone smoothly and you hadn't had any clots, so the doctors were pleased. Your mum was reluctant to let you go to school the next day, but you told her you were okay and you were looking forward to seeing Darby again. Your father seemed much more subdued after his talk with Darby and Flat refused to tell you what had been said between him and your man. But when he came back into the hospital room that day, he had just hugged you and whispered that he loved you and that was it. It was now school time and you walked into Nakoma High with your bag slung casually over one shoulder. The first person you saw was Darby, and you beelined for him, slinging your bag off your shoulder and bashing it into his backside. He spun around and grabbed you in a hug, bending you over backwards as you let out a playful scream. Hit me again, I'll break your back next time I'm in bed, 
He growled into your ear as he held you doubled over backwards. Seriously? You asked. Literally just got out of hospital and you're already dirty talking? Just letting you know where I stand with violence. He said, straightening and pulling you back up against him. Hey, what did you say to Dad? You asked curiously, that burning question still lingering in your mind. That's a secret man's business, Darby said with a smirk. No, seriously, he pressed. What did you tell him? I'm not saying, because under any other circumstances I would have been labelled a pussy, but he knows me now, and that's all you need to know, Darby said, pressing a finger to your lips. Hush, butterfly. You poked your tongue out from between your lips and licked his finger defiantly. Fine, you pouted, talking with his finger still pressed to your lips. I won't ask her again. Good girl, he uttered, his lust-filled turquoise eyes making your legs go weak. Miss Yin, the principal grunted as he rounded the corner. You jumped back violently and tucked your hands behind your back quickly. I'm sorry, you barked. The principal scowled and walked over to you. My office now, he said sternly. You hung your head and sighed. <sighs> I'm not even back for five minutes and I'm already in trouble, you thought, as you turned and dragged your feet down the hall, the principal keeping step beside you. Love you, Darby called after you, and you discreetly gave him the middle finger so the principal wouldn't see. I hear you were quite unwell recently, the principal commented. Yeah, you said softly. Are you in good health now? He pressed. Mm-hmm, you nodded. Glad to hear, he replied softly, getting just ahead of you so he could open the door to his office for you. Thanks, he whispered, head still down as you entered. Sit, please, he said with a stiff gesture towards the chair, and you flopped down into it. I got an email from Kapuru. Oh my god, I mean gosh, oh my gosh, you said quickly as your eyes flicked up and met his. And... They would like to see you for an interview, he said with a gentle smile. <gasps> really? You gasped with excitement. Oh, wow. Um, when? Monday, he replied. If you pass the interview, you will get the scholarship. Ah, oh, you exclaimed loudly. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Um, okay, thanks. Is that all? I need to call mum. That is it. I will forward the email to your parents, the principal said. Congratulations. Thank you, you said with a giant smile, standing up and heading for the office door quickly. You exited, and as soon as the door shut behind you, ran down the hall, heading for Darby as fast as your legs could carry you. Hey, poop for brains! You hollered down the hall when you saw Darby chatting with Kuro. She means you. Kuro deadpanned at Darby. Shut up. Of course she means me. Who else would get such an amazing nickname? Darby said sarcastically to Kuro before turning to you. What do you want, pain in the ass? Darby hollered back to you. You grinned from ear to ear and started sprinting down the hall towards him. Don't run, you female dick! You fall over! He shouted crouching a little and putting his arms out, ready to catch you. I got an interview! You screamed as you launched into his arms. I can't hear you because I'm deaf now, Darby says as he spun you around. An interview with who? Kapuru, you idiot! He giggled excitedly. Hell yeah. When? Darby asked as he hugged you close. Monday! He replied as he set you down on the floor again. Congrats, Kuro said from behind you. Thanks, dude, he said with a smile. You taking this drop kick with you? Kuro asked, nodding at Darby. He already got in, the prick. He cheated. He said, playfully smacking Darby on the chest. Yeah, stole the answer sheet and got in. Darby deadpan sarcastically at Kuro. Because you can totally do that. She's just mad that I'm smarter than her. You punched him in the guts. You are not, you commented, poking your tongue out. Darby playfully tried to bite your tongue and Kuro groaned. Uh, it's like 3am on adult sites and your balls deep in some weird stuff, like tongue biting kink with animalistic grunts, he said, making fun of your somewhat sexual playfulness. That's your top search. Darby leered at him. Screw you, Kuro replied with an amused snort. And you're my top search, you hooker. Boys, you're both weird, okay? Can I go home now? You monotoned. Only if you take me with you, Darby leered. Kuro, which way is it to Horny Jail? You asked the tall volleyballer. Don't ask me, wouldn't know, Kuro replied as he turned and headed off to his first class. I honestly think we're too good for this school, you said to Darby with a smirk. Let's go and ruin Kapuru together. See, this is why you're my ride or die. Darby said lowly as he grabbed your chin in hand and kissed you firmly on the lips. Can I be your ride and die? Just drive me off a cliff, you said. Oh yeah, baby, we have too much life left to live, he said, dragging your body in for an all-encompassing hug. The way he hugged you made you feel like, although what he had said was meant to be playful, he actually meant it on a deeper level. That night, your mum cried. She was excited that you'd gotten the opportunity for an interview, but it also meant that there was a high chance that you might be moving out with Darby. She liked him, sure, as much as any parent could, but she also knew nothing about him, and she didn't like that. Yen, she called out later, after having fixed her makeup to cover her puffy eyes. Would I be able to have Darby's number? Um, not trying to be rude, but no, you said bluntly as you walked into the room that she was in. Why do you want his number? 
I want to talk to his mum, she replied. Mum, don't, you whined. That's so embarrassing. Why do you want to talk to his mum? Please don't say anything about what happened at the hospital or why I was there in the first place. I don't think she knows. Yin, I don't know anything about your boyfriend and as your mother, it's only natural that I'd want to know more about him, she said in her strict mum voice. You pulled a face and let your shoulders slouch. Oh man, you groaned, pulling your phone from your pocket. Fine, here. You copied Darby's number in a text to her and sent it, putting your phone in your pocket and leaving the room immediately. No sooner had you left the room that you ran, bolting to your room and closing the door quickly. SOS, you texted Darby. Mum demanded to have your number. Proceed with caution. Oh, he replied. Mum in law's going to do a booty call, huh? Shut up, this is serious, you sent. She's doing mum recon work and she's bound to find out that you're a weird, sex perverted alien and send you back to planet 69. Oh, cover's blown. He texted. Guess this is goodbye. He then immediately sent another text. Yo, your mum just hit me up. Oh crap, already? That was quick, you replied. Did she ask for your mum's number? Yeah, he replied bluntly. Oof, to gangbang. Ew, mum, ex-mum, ex-daughter, ex-son. That's not even correct, what the heck? Get it. You're so weird. Are you giving her your mum's number? Yeah. What? You texted in capitals. No, why? I got nothing to hide. He texted you. Love me or hate me. I am who I am. And there ends chapter 26. Stay tuned for chapter 27 coming tomorrow.